Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless. And today I'm going to try something that is completely out of the realm of my understanding. Uh, a friend of mine likes steampunk and he told me all about it. So I tried to look up what is steampunk because I guess I've been so out of it and I'm too old to think about it. So I did and I saw all the crazy things that steampunk has. They have gears and pocket watches and flying blimps and all kinds of crazy stuff. So I just decided to create something which my interpretation of what steampunk is. So this is what we're going to end up with and I hope you like what we're doing. There's definitely some things that should be done more than this and there's so much more to add to it but I tried to keep the video as short as possible for something as complicated as this. So let's get started. So I have a blank document here. Um, the size I chose was 715 by 800. You could choose any size you want. That's, I just happened to pick that after I cropped my practice. So that's what I ended up with, but you can make it any size you want. And so the first thing I did was I looked up old paper. And so I found this old paper. I went into stock, of course, and looked up old paper. And I pulled these in earlier because I didn't want the tutorial to go on too long. So I pulled in this old paper and I wanted a lot of the old edges to show like the darkness and stuff. So I'm just bringing it in to approximately the size we need. And that looks pretty good because steampunk is very old and, it, and it's coming out of the steam era. And then I chose this factory picture. Again, I looked up factory. And so what I did with the factory picture is I converted it to black and white. So I went to adjustments, uh, black and white. And I left it as is. I can fix that later. So next I went to filter, detect edges. And then I changed this, uh, the blend mode from normal to a linear burn, which is what I was looking for right there. Problem is I didn't like the look. So I took the picture and inverted it, which is Control or Command I, which looks much better. And if you want to see what it looks like normally, that's what it would have been. And so we went to Linear Burn. So it was a little harsh for me, so I cut it down. The, I cut down the opacities just so it looked like a little bit of fading in there. And that's not too bad. We can change it if we need to later, but that just gives you the old effect. So before I go further, I, since I worked with these two already, I want to take them out of these original folders. I want to bring this to the top and bring it on its own layer because I don't want it to be in a group. And I'm bringing this one to the top. So it's the same thing. So there's my originals, my, and I'm pulling them out one at a time. So now I'm going to pull out a blimp, and I'm going to bring that way to the top here and bring that out. And what I did was I looked up blimp and I found this Goodyear blimp. So I sized it down to where I think I might want it to be. Something to that effect. And I think that looks pretty good. And so now I'm going to mask it. So I'm choosing my selection brush tool. I'll make the brush bigger. And this shouldn't be a hard mask. It should be a very easy mask. Let's get close up here and see where we're going. I'm holding the space bar and dragging. That's how I move around and I let go of the space bar and I'm back to the tool I was on. So that looks pretty decent. Let's see if I can get this edge. And I don't know what this is, but I'll add it in there. It looks like it's not even attached to anything and we need that wing and let's kind of get that I actually probably should have gone the other way I should have selected the blue and then inverted the selection it probably would have been an easier selection but since I started this way this is not too bad Get a little more up here and I'll hit refine and let's see what we have. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Let's see what it looks like in black matte. Looks close. 
I, I, there's going to be so much done to it. it. Really, the edges aren't that important in this particular case. But since it looks like some of this did not get done on the inside, what I'll do now is I'll switch to foreground. And, I, what I'll, and then I'll paint on this, and it'll add these back in. And I don't have to go right to the edge. Infinity Photo kind of, whoops, that's too much. Let's go like that. I don't want to lose any of this detail here. Okay, let's get some of this. Whoops, I don't like what it did there. Some of that. And we're, we're close enough for what we need it for because we're really going to cover this whole thing up. And I'm going to let it go. So I'm going to do new layer. No, just mask it. There we go. And say apply. And there's our blimp. And let's see where we're at. I think this is pretty good. And I know a lot of people don't like the idea of rasterizing things, but I feel sometimes that once it's in place, I like to rasterize it because I don't like to have all this extra stuff going on. So I'd rather rasterize it in the beginning because I know I'm not changing the size. So I'll right click and I'll say rasterize and trim, which means not only am I rasterizing, but I'm getting rid of all the extra stuff, I hope. So rasterize and trim. And there you go. So now we just have the blimp. So the next thing I need to do is, whoops, with the blimp, is I need to get rid of this good year. So let's get closer. You can do it a lot of ways. Since I'm going to eventually cover it, I'll show you this. This is a big thing of rust, and I will be covering the blimp with the rust. It doesn't have to be perfect. So what I'll do is I'll just take a paintbrush, and I'll choose this color again. Most of it will be covered, but I'm going to choose one of these mid-colors, blues here, and do that. And then I'll just start painting with a soft brush. Let's just do this. We're just painting over this now. We don't want the good year to show. And then I'll take a blur, and I'll blur this all in. And that's just about where I need to be. Next thing I need to do now is take this rust, and I think I might want to make it smaller. So let's see how big this rusty, wow, it's very rusty. So let's just take this down to where I think it wants to be. Maybe something like that. We don't want it smaller than the blimp, of course. And I don't want this extra showing out here. So let's just do that. I think that looks pretty good. And in fact, yeah, that I think that works. So now we'll... We have to right click and rasterize. And now that we rasterized it, we, we control click on the blimp layers icon to select the blimp. And then we go to the rust layer and we do control or command J. And what that did was it made a selection of the blimp. And now we deselect control or command D. And let's do instead of the blend mode normal, we can go down the line. Whoops, we're on the wrong one. We can go down the line and see what it looks like. There's a few. looks pretty bad. But I think average works. So I'm going to do average. And let's get a better look at this now. So now we have an old rusty looking blimp, which I think is perfect. Very old looking. So I like that. So now what I'll do is I will take the blimp and the rust, and I will group it. 
and just call it blimp. And I no longer need this Rust layer, so I'm just going to delete it. And in fact, I'm going to take, remember the factory picture and the background, and I will group that and say background. And we no longer want that to move because that's our background, so I'll lock that into place. So it's getting there, little by little. So now the next thing is I pulled in a pirate ship. Here's a pirate ship. And I don't want to go through all the masking with you because it's going to take too much time. So I already have a ship done. So I'm bringing this up and I already had it masked because I didn't want to take the time. But I don't like the colors of it. So what I'll do now is I will do an effects and let color overlay. And I actually chose this brown before. Oh, I did. It doesn't really, I can get any of these. I just picked one of these browns. That one might be a little bit darker. And then I did overlay. And I think I still might want to go one of the lighter ones. So let's try somewhere in that look. No, nope. let's try it again. Maybe I do want the darker. Okay, I think I like that, so that's good. So the problem I don't like is there's yellow here. So I think I will do adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm gonna choose a yellow and do my picker and try and pick some of this yellow here. And what I'll do is, let's see if I picked, I did pick it. So most of that yellow, I would like it to go more in a brownish color. But since it's not working the way I really want it to go, so what I'll do is I can bring the saturation way down like that. And actually, I think I like that. That's pretty good. And that's only bringing the saturation. I'll, I'll add a little more, just get a little bit of red in there. Something like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're still in the, in the warm feeling. Maybe, maybe I'll just go a little bit warmer on this. Um, maybe a little bit more reddish. There you go. So if I brought that tone to the red, I think it kind of works with the rust. So I'm pretty happy with that the way it is. So now we need to get some ropes because the blimp is going to carry the ship which is a weird thing, but that's what steampunk seems to do all the time. So here we'll do, uh, we'll take a brush, um, a fairly medium soft brush, 25%, and we need to take a color for the rope. We're going to make rope, and I'd say one of these darker. We want it darker than the background, so I'm thinking like maybe like that. And then let's get a close up here. We need to add a new layer and call it rope. Okay, and now we're going to take the brush with that brown paint, click and once and hold shift and go to here. So we're going to take the other side and go click, hold shift, and go right up to about here. And then Kind of drag that around like that. That looks pretty good. All right, now we got to do the rope on the other side. So the other side, once again, we're just going to take, whoops, we're going to take the paintbrush. This time we're going to go under the ship here and over the other one. We're going to go click, hold shift, click to about halfway up here, which is about here. And then paint right around. Whoops, I didn't like that. Let's just go I'll try that again. Again, I'm not working with a tablet. I'm working with a mouse because most of you are using a mouse. So we've got to do one in the back and we'll get rid of the stuff that doesn't show. So make like it's going around the bottom. And we'll go from here. And we make it smaller because it's toward the back. There, one click, 
and then right about I'd say there. That's pretty good. And then we can click on this command click on the ship and look at the rope that anywhere where the rope is crossing um, the flag we can just erase it or we can mask it out because this is the this rope goes behind oops so I'm just gonna erase it and erase that we don't want to see any of that and what else we don't want any of this Right. And I think that might be it. I see more here, I think. This pretty much should only mask a race where the ship is showing. So then control I'll command D to deselect. Uh, we still have a little more maybe like right there. But, and we can fine tune it later. I'm doing this once again, I tell you all the time, I'm doing this very quickly. And the video would take too long if I really spent as much time as I should be spending on this. So let's go back to the ship because this is bothering me a little bit. Not that it really should matter, but let's take the mask. I'm going to hit D to make these black and white. And I'm going to take my paintbrush and just get rid of some of these speckled things in between. You won't even see them later. Either way, I just don't want them to be there. So let's just get rid of some of this extra stuff like that. Okay, I'm, get, I'm not doing it perfect. I just get rid of some of these extras. Okay, good enough for what we're doing here. So from the distance, it doesn't look bad. Okay, so now let's have some fun stuff going on here. So we have the ship. And now we're going to pull in, I pulled in a telescope. Bring that to the front and turn that on. And the telescope I masked out, and this one should be not so bad. So let me give this a try. I might even do this. Let me rasterize it so that I can do some of this. I'm going to click Add. I'm just doing the Fill Select. And I'm just clicking in all these spaces. And it does a pretty good job because the background, well, we don't even need the bottom here. It's because the background is pretty close to a solid. It's easy to figure out where everything goes. I'm just doing that. Click, 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 click. Once again, I'm not doing anything perfect here. I'm just trying to get this to look okay so that we can work with it. And you should spend tons of time getting all this right. So let me see if I did that right. I'm going to mask it. Whoops, undo. Because I selected the outside, I have to do select invert the mask. Invert pixel selection and then mask it. And then we deselect. And, you, and so I know you see all that white, but the reason I'm not worried about the white, I'll show you in a minute. Oops, I have to be on the selection. And I'm going to shrink that down to about where I want it to be. And I think I want it to be in the front here. Something to this effect. Yeah, I think that looks about right. And so now I am going to rasterize this. And then I'm going to, mul see all the extra white? I'm going to multiply it. I don't need all that extra white. I just want this whole look. So let me put this into place where I think it which should be. I'm going to cut off the bottom. I don't need the bottom. So let's go here. I don't need any of this bottom piece right here. I'm going to go right from here like that. And then I'm going to control a command X and then that's my bottom. So deselect and now I have it right here. And now I need to warp it. Actually, let's do yeah, that. Maybe like that. Go to mesh warp. And I don't want anything warped above this spot right here. So if I double click on the line, 
then that will not move as long as I don't touch above that. And I'm just going to drag this down and drag this up and kind of on a curve where I think it would look like if it was up on this thing. And I think that might kind of be right like that. And I'm going to hit apply and then go back again. So that looks pretty good. I like that so far. So what else can we do to make this more fun? I, so here's what I thought I'd do. And I grabbed a bird. And I'm going to show you the bird. And it just took, found this bird. And I masked him out and just took the wings. And I don't want to spend time with that. So I'll show you what I did. I'll just bring this up. And I took that wing. And then I have another wing right here, and I'll bring that one to the top. So these are the wings. And so those are the wings that I pulled off the bird. So what I want to do is place them in a way that it looks like he's flying. So to do that, I need to get this back wing behind the blimp. Whoops, wrong one. Sorry. Let me, re let me reverse these so I could see what's what and keep them in order. I did it again. There we go. Bring that behind the blimp. Okay. So now I got to kind of get a feel of where those wings would be. And I would kind of think maybe, I think I want to do that. And maybe this one a little further like that and lower. Kind of on that kind of a look. I also can go further back. But I didn't want to cover up this rope. So let's do that. This one, it looks like it should be smaller, actually. So I'm going to kind of do that. I think that looks pretty good. So, except, of course, they don't look like um, they belong in this picture. So what I'll do here is I'll do, a, I'll pick a brown, which, again, I picked this last time. I just drag this over to any of these browns, something to this effect. And, and then I did a color overlay, and I did soft light, which I thought worked pretty good. There's overlay, which is also good, but I kind of like the soft light. So I close that, and then I select the other one, and oops, I first I select that one and say edit copy, and I select the other one, and I said edit paste effects. And why didn't that happen? No, nope, I didn't select it. There we go. Edit, paste, effects. And it's the same color. And so now we have, I, you know what? I still don't like this. I feel like it should be smaller and maybe further back. And then this one should be further back. Okay. And maybe even down. How about down like that? And, and then this one, something like that. Okay, I like that. I'm pretty good there. So next I did, next thing I did was I got a pocket watch. Later on, just so you know, we're going to take this rope. We got to give it some shadow here and all that. We'll do the finishing touches. But first I wanted to get the rest of this in. So I took a pocket watch. Um... I use my deselect, sorry. So I, I just select it on the outside since it's all white. And then added the inside. And then since I select the outside, I have to say select invert pixel selection. So now we're selecting the inside. And then I mask it. And deselect, and that's good for what we need. And let me bring this down to size. Whoops, sorry, that's the mask. Let's take the whole thing now, bring it down to size that I want to work with. Let's bring closer. And I don't like this white around the edges because of the mask. So I'll have to take that mask and with black, paint those edges out.
And once I feel like I have the thing the right size, I am going to rasterize it again because I don't need the mask. This is basically for web. So what I want to try to do is make it look like it's swinging and I'm going to tie a rope to it. They seem to use a lot of pocket watches in steampunk, so that's why I chose that. So, I don't know, maybe we could pull it out to there. That's pretty good, right? Now we're going to tie a, a rope to the bottom. So I want it to look really like it's kind of flying. So before I do that, I think what I'll do is give it perspective. So I'll go, let's see, filter, no, layer, live filter layer, distort, perspective. I kind of want it to look like it's flying a little bit, like kind of on, let me see, like it's closer here and further back here, like that. I think that might work. And I don't want to, let's take the grid off. Okay, put the grid back on. Let's try a little bit less. And I think that works. And now that I have this where I want, I'm just going to rasterize it. Again, people, I know you, most of you don't want people to rasterize things, but I just feel like I'd rather flatten everything out when I'm working so I don't have so many layers because I know that's where it's going to be anyway. I'm not sure if I want to give this a little bit more color. Um, I, I don't think it really needs it, but let's see. Let's just give it effects, color overlay again, and pick one of these rounds. I don't know, something like that maybe, and let's go down the line, and maybe I won't use it. Ooh, that one looks, soft light looks very good. It kind of gives a feel, but let's just go down. It's all trial and error. Okay, my choice is soft light or no color lay, overlay, and I like the soft light, so I'll stay with that. So let's see how we're going to get this rope to work. I want the rope to come from here. So maybe I'll use the pen tool this time. And let's do, let's say first here. And we want it to kind of go around the watch. And then we'll drag up this way a little. Like that. We'll fix that later. And then let's see, it would be swinging kind of like this maybe. And maybe here. And none of that looks right. So, <laughs> so here, so here's what I'll do is I'll just take this, give it a line. Let's see about the size of the rope I want. And we'll make it the same color brown as, say, that one. I should have done the ropes with that before. I should have thought of that. And so now we're done. And now we can go to the node tool and fix what the mess I made here. So let's see, nodes. I think this would swing a little further that way. Kind of like, it's kind of pulling. But I really did want this part to go a little bit up here. No, well, that's not good. Maybe I'll just add another node here and just kind of go like it's swinging. That's what really what I'm trying for. Like swinging in the wind kind of thing, if that makes any sense to you. And then here's where I want the rope to wrap around to come right back to here. And let's make this closer. I don't know why this is a mess like this, but let's see if we can bring that down. That looks pretty good, I think. So, and maybe on top here, we really should hook it to something. So let it go like kind of the very top pulling in out of something here. And I think we're okay there. So let's see what that looks like without that. And then, of course, down here, we got to decide, is the rope going over and under? I'd say over and under. So what I'll do is, let's make this, call, call this rope. So now I need to make sure it looks like it's going 
under there, so I'm going to control click on the icon layer of the watch and go back to the rope layer. And I'm just going to take an eraser and on the top part, I'm just going to erase that rope and then deselect. And now let's see what we look, it looks like it's going around, which is what I wanted to do. Um, I think I want to change, honestly, I think I made a mistake with this rope and I don't like the way it looks and I don't, cause the wings are touching it. So I have to go find that rope. Let's go find back to this one. Here it is. That's that rope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo that section. So let's just make a marquee around that part of the rope and delete it. Control or Command X. And then let's just do that rope again because I do not like it. So I'm still on that old rope layer. So here, this time I think I want to use the pen tool for this one because I want it to go around the ship, I think. So we're going to click and then come around like this and then around and then go straight up this way to here and then I want it to go here but I want it to look like it's going over and I think I like that so much better so that looks so much more realistic and so I'm going to do another one. So yeah, so here's rope, and now we have curves on a separate layer, and that's okay. I could do that, but I'm okay with that one. So if I want it to look a little better, what I could do with this rope one is change, if I want it to look closer to the other rope, there we go, we could just raise it, and that looks closer. I'll leave the other one, but if I would have done it again, I don't have the time, I would have done the same thing here. So I like that better than the, the way I painted it the first time. So let's do one more. Imagine that it's coming around here and it's right about here. And we want to go to the other side of this, which would kind of come out here. So remember, this is where it's going to go down because it would have done that. So this side of the ship actually would have been around here. So click and then say about here is where I think the rope would have gone and that's good so that rope i'm going to call that rope also so these two are the ropes let's do all three ropes now well actually this rope should be behind the blimp and the ship so where is the blimp and the ship so that rope is behind and this rope is in front which is fine so now i kind of like it better so here, now we have to figure out the shadow here. So if I take this and I duplicate it, control command J, and I call the bottom one, say, rope shadow. And I'm just basically going to do an effects under it. And I'm going to do an outer shadow. And we'll see what, which way we want it to look. I think I'm going to go to that side, the shadow. And I'll just make it, I want it to be a little darker, more intense like that, I think is pretty good. Okay. And so we'll close that. But one problem we have is you don't have shadow down here. It doesn't make any sense. So what we'll do now is we'll just take the eraser or actually we can mask it. Let's just mask it because all of you people get mad at me for not masking. I use eraser a lot. <laughs> so let's do that and let's do but we're going to hit D to make these black and white again and then we'll take a paintbrush and we'll start erasing because this would not have a shadow because it's up in the air like that right we would only have a shadow going on the blimp and we might have a shadow on some of this Yeah, we wouldn't have a shadow here. And that's kind of where it is. And I, I could tell you, if I was doing this again, I would have done it with the pen tool because this is, does not look great as a close when I'm getting close, but you get the idea. You could, have, you could do it with the pen tool and I want to get rid of this part of the shadow. So we're just basically deleting the underneath piece. And maybe like there. 
and there wouldn't be any shadows here. Wouldn't be any shadows anywhere behind here because it's behind. So let's leave it at that. So that looks a little more realistic. In reality, this shadow would have been moved over. So maybe let's just add to this layer. We'll add a little black and really almost very soft and almost no opacity. And then we're just going to have some more, right? Like moving it as if it was fading out. And this one should be a little darker. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's get to this one. We need a shadow there. So I can, again, duplicate it. Control Command J. This is rope. And this is rope shadow. Actually, what I'll do with this one, it could, because it's a line, I'm going to actually rasterize the second one. So it's no longer a line, and then I'm going to give it the effects of a shadow because I need to erase it later. So let's do again the outer shadow. Um, bring it up, bring it up. Whoa, that's the wrong way. Bring it to the side like we did before. Like that, and I think more intense. Maybe like that. And a little bit of a bigger radius like that and for this time what I'll do is I'll just I'm just going to erase it because it's easy enough so I'll just erase the back one and we go right around there and maybe there's some shadow no there wouldn't even be a shadow there because this is so far out the only place there might be some left is right there and what I'll also do is I'll add that black again here where it's close. And I'm just, it's the reason I keep going, it's only 7% opacity. So I'm kind of having to go over and over again, but I'd rather go easier on there than harder. And this one should go a little further out. And then this one should be darker right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's see. I, I have one more thing, oh, a couple more things. I have a rooster now. Let's bring the rooster up to the top of my thing. And I just pulled this rooster in. And I already did the mask because I don't want to take you spend the time here. And when I did the mask, I wasn't that careful as usual <laughs> on these things. So what I did though is, let's shrink this down and a little bit down. See the white fringe? I don't care so much about the white fringe because all I'm going to do is do multiply, which is gonna get rid of the white again because it's supposed to be dark looking. So I'm just gonna pick a spot there. And I think that looks pretty cool. So the, the last thing I'm gonna do, let's just type steampunk here. S-T-E-A-M-P-U-N-K. And I'm going to find a font, an old style font. Uh, let's see. Let's just click. Actually, that one looks pretty good. Now we want, there's always gears. So we always have to have gears in Steampunk. There's somewhere along the way, there's always a gear. Don't ask me why. And I guess because of the old factories, they had gears. So look what we have here in shapes. We actually have gears somewhere. It's called cog tool. So let's create a cog. I'm going to hold shift and we can create a cog. Let me give it a color of one of these browns, I guess, like that. And I want to try something. I'm not sure how it's going to work. I'm going to try putting this Oops, should hold shift. I'm going to try putting this as part of this S. And maybe the other one, another one. And we're going to, I think I want to replace the S kind of with this. I don't know if it's going to work. 
if it'll be noticeable. Let's see. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe smaller? Well, maybe just right in there, in the S like that. But now it has to be smaller because they have to connect. So let's take them both. Well, we could do that, which is not bad. This one, smaller. Maybe a little bit turned that way so that they just connect to each other like that. And let's see what we can do, maybe a gradient overlay. I don't know. Uh, let's try this one. One of these dark browns, leave the brown there. And this one Brown, maybe. No, not enough. Gotta go lighter. Okay, how about there? That's not terrible. And we should definitely make this thicker. Oops, why is my stroke not showing? Ah, no good. It doesn't work that way. So I guess I have to do an a stroke here and see if that works. Yeah, I need this to use the stroke there. Let's go back a little and see where we're at. Okay, I can live with that. And then this one, I don't even mind being darker. And then maybe take another one, control or command J, put it in the P. And instead of just leaving one with a hole, duplicate that, make it smaller. And let's get a close up of that. And maybe not a hole. I don't know. No, that's not bad. I think I can leave that that way. All right. So we can go on and on. There's so many things that I haven't done that I should do on here. But you kind of get the idea. This is all kind of fun. This is definitely out of the realm of what I understand. I don't know much about steampunk. I just, when I heard my friend say that he likes steampunk, I looked up some steampunk pictures and saw the weird things that they have. So you can create anything you want. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please click like and subscribe and tell others about my channel. Thank you so much and have a good day.